I bought a Dream Band recently, uh, second hand. A lot of people will know this isn't supported by the vendor anymore, Rhythm. They do still make bands and they're still uh, doing really well, but they work more closely with the health insurance and, and medical industry. And uh, people also use this um, because it is FDA approved for all kinds of research purposes. They've done really well to kind of get into that market. Um, so a, a lot happens in the research space with these. But the service still does work. The band still works. They still have the apps on the app store, though they haven't really updated them. Um, so you can still use these. They are considered to be probably the most accurate sleep trackers that you can get. Hence, them working more closely with you know clinical research and uh, you know working with people that have got issues with sleeping um, in like a, a medical level. So I've got a fairly good price on this one. This is the first edition, um, and I got it for around like £200, $200. Dream 2 is by far the more prevalent uh, model that you see. That's the one that is uh, you know, considered medical grade. I'll go through this more in uh, the write-up on my website, but there's there's not that much difference between the Dream 1 and 2. The, the Dream 2, the sensors, the way they fit around the band, and the band itself is built a bit better. Um, but I don't think it's enough for it to be worth you know double the price that you see on eBay. So as I say, nicely boxed and packaged. Uh, it comes in this case, which is uh, not flimsy at all. It's a it's a decent carry case. Um, the Dream 2 had like a dock station that you could use for charging. This just has a straightforward cable. In terms of sensors, it's got a couple at the back, occipital sensors. That's quite unique feature of this. Most of the other EEG devices are usually either on the frontal lobes or temporal. This is different. It has these kind of like fork things that kind of go through your hair. And then uh, there are sensors at the front um, as well. And then there's also your standard heart rate monitor. And then another unique feature of this is this bone conduction speaker. And this has been really effective in the smart alarm, which is probably one of the better aspects of this uh, device. It is the best smart alarm I've ever used. Firstly, with an EEG band, one of the easier things to do is recognise um, deep sleep versus light sleep, at least relatively to each individual person. So it's going to do that off the bat quite easily. But then this alarm itself is much nicer to wake up to than anything audible from a normal speaker that you'd have on your phone or something else and then obviously it doesn't wake up anyone else around you at least in this version of the band it's actually quite easy to take apart and i'm not going to do it fully on this video uh, um again in my write-up I, I kind of break it down a little bit more than this but i just wanted to kind of show you under the underneath the um back cover what it looks like inside is because it's quite interesting we've got quite a big battery for a wearable in here um and that's largely because inside of this is quite a significant amount of computing power and then we've got all the different uh, sensors that has to do with the processing for so um yeah just wanted to show you what it looks like inside really because I, I haven't seen anyone else do that and then also there's always this question of what you know what happens when this battery fails knowing that this is a um you know not supported by the vendor anymore it's pretty easy to replace this battery by the looks of it so the way this works compared to the Muse is very different. Uh, where the Muse kind of syncs EEG data to your phone that does all the processing uh, along with Muse's servers. With the Dream it's different, it does everything on the band itself. For our telelights, it's not quite everything. Um, there is a lot that's done on Dream servers as well. But there, because it has that smart alarm capability on there and um, it avoids using Bluetooth, it does at least a lot of the processing on the band itself. So it does have like a built-in computer. It's not overly sophisticated, but at the same time, it's not just low level, uh, like a microcontroller that what they've got in use. Also the, the sensor hardware um, and processing is a lot more sophisticated on this. It's not necessarily cutting edge anymore. You do get better EEG processing modules now. Um, but yeah, at the time this was made, it was, um, you know, close to top end. So yeah, the band is a computer, it does all the processing itself. One advantage of that is that you don't need your phone with you when you've got this band, you can literally just uh, use it and then sync the data afterwards. Everything's done um, by Wi-Fi when you sync data, so it goes directly to rhythm servers. So there's no in between doing anything through your Bluetooth. Bluetooth's only really used to check the signal quality's right, set up the alarm, um, volume settings, that kind of thing. Uh, but when it comes to actually syncing data, that's all done through Wi-Fi. And the obvious downside to that is because this headband has to do everything, it needs all that additional computing power where it doesn't have your phone to do that. Um, and so 
Yeah, when it comes to battery usage, they're pretty much the same. This thing lasts about 10 hours, the Muse lasts about 10 hours, even though it's, you know, it's a fraction of the power it uses. So, yeah, there's kind of pros and cons. Um, but yeah, either way, they, they didn't skimp on um, hardware. They're like, you did get what you pay for. They, they literally packed everything they could into this and there wasn't really any compromises. So that's a definite. On how this fits during sleep, I had no issues with it. I think it fits okay. Um, the Muse is probably slightly more comfortable, although there's not much in it. Um, yeah, so pretty good in terms of uh, fitting. When you put this on uh, before you're about to go to sleep, then it does a center check, much like the Muse does, uh, except for this one is much faster. So I think that process is more efficient um, than what they have for the Muse. Well, obviously, you know, it's not necessarily a like for like comparison. They are quite different in terms of hardware, but you know, it's something to bear in mind. The first thing you have to do with Dream when you start using it is there's a seven night assessment phase where they collate a lot of sleep data and I guess calibrate things based off of that um, and tailor it to you. I'm not sure how exactly how that works, whether they have individual sleep researchers go through your data manually or use machine learning algorithms or a combination of both. I don't know. But either way, they they, uh, they do that initial assessment phase on you before giving you, you know, more detailed sleep reporting data. So before then, you'll get a lot of metadata around how well the band's fitting, that kind of thing. You'll still get hypnogram and your sleep positions. Um, but yeah, don't expect too much more uh, until that kind of first assessment phase is done. Once you've done that initial phase, then you do get access to uh, more reporting and data. I have to say, you get a lot more than what you get from Muse. It's not even close. Um, I mean, to be fair with the Muse, it was, I don't think the original intention was for that device to be sleep focused, um, although that's what they're switching to now with the Muse S. So it's kind of like um, molding a product into something that it was might not intentionally been for. But either way, the, the, the software on the Dream just covers a lot more um, information around, you know, how your sleep compares to other people in your, uh, like a similar demograph, um, things like sleep on onset, how much REM sleep you've got compared to others, um, deep sleep, and then also um, things around sleep debt, and even tips and cards on, uh, you know, different strategies that could potentially help uh, your sleep as well. Uh, on top of that, it has a whole section around programs and the ones that it will bring up will be tailored to you. Um, so these are pretty easy to kind of like navigate to in the app. So I think they've done a great job with the software. Like I say, it looks like they haven't updated this in ages. And so there are a couple of things that would have been good to see in here. So I think one of the main, one of the things that Muse has that this doesn't is uh, deep sleep intensity. I do think that's actually pretty useful to see. Muse does give a bit of data around that, which isn't on here. That's probably the only thing. Um, otherwise, you know, hands down, this has, um, you know, better analysis on uh, your sleep than the Muse does. But yeah, bear in mind, we're talking about sleep analysis here. If we're talking about meditation, then the Dream 2 doesn't really cater so much for that, in fact, at all. So, uh, you know, where the Muse has things like what level of meditation you're at, the Dream doesn't have anything that... that that does that sort of thing. Um, it also doesn't have all the guided meditation and sleep guidances that you get on Muse if you're into that sort of thing. So they, you know, these products do diverge in certain ways and in different areas. I'd like to be able to tell you how accurate I think this is in an empirical way, but I've not been able to get raw data in the same way that I can for the Muse um, because there is no ready to go API. There's no, um, I haven't found a, an easy software approach of, of getting the raw data out either. So it's quite limited. Um, you can actually, I think there are paid tiers where you can uh, subscribe to get raw data, but I'm just against that kind of thing anyway. It's probably also extortionate um, because it's usually for researchers. So yeah, another mistake people have made um, when they sponsored this for Kickstarter, they didn't ask that the raw data be available without um, subscription and you know as much as people say oh, I'm not really interested in having raw data because I'm not going to do anything with it this is the reason why you ask for it because now you know it's not available to consumers so as soon as the service is taken offline and this is a cloud-based product then um, you know these are going to be brick devices. I did find one way of um, potentially being able to look at how good the signal quality is from the sensors 
based on the uh, signal quality check that you do at the beginning. So that my website's got more detail on that and I've got a GitHub uh, folder which has some files on there where you can kind of export data from the band. Um, but as I say, it's low quality data and it's only used for checking signal quality rather than anything that you can do proper sleep analysis on. But, you know, it might give an indication of, um, you know, how good the sensor quality is at least. So with all that said, most of it is de definitely positive. Would I recommend getting one of these? I would say no. Um, and the main reason for that is because it's not supported for consumers. So the app hasn't been updated for ages. There's a good chance that they'll turn it off eventually for consumers. I can't immediately see an easy way of getting the raw data off of the band. Not from a software approach. I, anyway, there might be, you know, we might be able to hardware hack it, but I don't really want to go to the extent of damaging it yet while it still works. And then even then, there's no guarantees you can get it. So I personally would stick with the Muse, even though it does have shortcomings against this device. Um, you know, but at the same time, there are pluses that the Muse has that this doesn't around meditation and that kind of thing. So I think on balance, I'd stick with the Muse. I think most of the Muse's shortcomings are on the software side. So I think if Muse themselves don't uh, make improvements to the app, which I'm sure they will, to be fair, over time. Um, but then on top of that, other developers are able to do it as well. I myself am working on a uh, product although it's just based on a PC um, that will look to implement things like a smart alarm, which I can't believe isn't on the Muse yet, um, but then also a REM alarm potentially for lucid dreaming. Um, so keep an eye out for that uh, in the coming months. And just look to see if uh, Dream come back to consumers at some point. And at the moment, I'd say that I'd imagine they won't, because I think it is quite a small market that these devices are in. Um, and this is expensive to make. So they took a big risk anyway, initially in doing it. And they've kind of like hit a bit of a jackpot with the American insurance market. So I think they'll stick with that while they can. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my view on it. Stick with the Muse um, as interesting a device as this was. At some point they might fall. I mean, if it, if it dropped below like $200, $100, then it, <laughs> I don't know what you'd keep it for though, like novelty purposes. To be fair, the smart alarm will always work. And like I say, it is the best smart alarm ever. So if all you cared about was a smart alarm, this is the best that you can get. Um, and it will always work, I think. As always, there's more detailed uh, info in the write-up that I've done on my website. A lot more on the technical side of things, which I think will probably be overkill for this YouTube video. And then, yeah, we'll be back to the Muse next. So I'll be looking at making a software product that does a few different things to what the Muse app does. So we will see how that goes.